Uh, hello everyone, it is Rick C as always with another video the Rick's reviews. Now, two days ago, um, Video Game Wrestling posted a series of videos under the name DTS Pandora. Now, this was um, a review created by um, a subscriber to not only him, but to him. Uh, Y2J Matthew, it was his idea, um, and say this quote took it upon us to take that idea and make it into the next pay per view. So, yeah, and the, the review has been anticipated for for quite some time now. I know I've been a, I've been busy with um, you know making the con getting um. Some things done. I've decided that um, we're gonna skip house show four, and we're just gonna go to the go home show because I really, really, really want to get Beach Blast done. Because if you saw the subscriber thing, you'll know that we have a big contest coming up. I want to get subscribers coming out of the way, and I want to get on to the pay per view, to the CP, to the pay per view where we have the subscriber warfare. And I really, really. But, you know, this is actually a good thing that it's going to take quite a while to get there because that gives more people the opportunity to enter into the contest. And I'm very happy about that. So, let's, get, let's not waste any more time. Let's get this underway. Let's um, talk about GTS Pandora. GTS Pandora began with the pre-show of Pandora. It was a six-man tag team match. Um, Jeff Testicles, Jamie the Whaleman, and Draken versus three mystery opponents. And those mystery opponents were Mark, Ice, and Snow. Now, you have seen Mark before on CWA. Recently, um, the Lone Wolves attacked him and Steven. He's Steven's partner. Unfortunately, he was supposed to debut on CWA. However, the Lone Wolves ruined that and, and stopped that debut. Basically, screwed him out of, de out of his debut. Um, there was no match. It moved on to um, Tex Hampton and Sam Campbell versus the Elite. And Ice and Snow, I, I don't know much about them. Other than the fact that one of them is a dickhead and the other is like really sensitive. So this was a big debut for the three of them as they went on to make their debut and they won their debut match, of course, as usual. Now, if you'll notice that Jeff McTestles has seemed to have fallen down the card quite a bit. Last we saw him at a pay-per-view, he was the DF champion, and he got defeated by Charles Dante Dillinger for the DF championship. Um, <clears throat> and then we, when we last saw him in general, I believe he got squashed by Giant Leather. Mm -hmm. Tells you how far he's come down the card. Well deserved. So, after the pre-show... We get on to the actual show itself. The opening contest. I believe it was the opening contest. Yeah. Um, opening contest was Wendy Torres versus Heather Angela. Now this match sparks from the Judy, Julie Putney, um, Julie Putney t the women's tournament. Now um, Heather got Wendy counted out. To advance in the tournament and Wendy wanted revenge and just the fact that in the comments he put in the description he puts CDD's girlfriend who is not who is obviously not a werewolf but she's not she just likes to display her flexibility by um, scratching the back of her head with um, the foot and likes to do on CDD's DF championship no, no harm but a foul it's okay to have your interests but basically, this was a squash match. Let's be honest. Um, Wendy, um, the wolf girl of, of Vancouver, Vancouver War, the, the ginger wolf of Vancouver. Yeah, that's ginger wolf girl. Even though she, you know she's not she's obviously not a werewolf. Stop asking. She's not a werewolf. Um, she wants it with a, with a Roman Reigns drive-by kick and puts that little cheater away. If you thought that was a squash match, next was Lodestar Luminous versus Chloe Valentine. This, again, feuded from the tournament, and basically Lodestar freaking killed Chloe. 
he basically killed her. Put her away with the GTS, with the go to sleep, or with the good, the good night kiss, as I got the good night kiss, and ended it. And then after the match, he beat the shit out of her some more, sending a message to the women's division that she is going to be the champion one day. Then we get on to easily, in my opinion, one of the moment, one of the matches of the night. It was the CD. It was Charles Dutton doing to TF Championship Monster Hunter Challenge. That's right, the Monster, the inaugural Monster Hunter Challenge. It's like a, it's gauntlet rules. CDD faces off with three monsters: Slender Dick, Giant Arc, and Draken. And these matches were off the chain. They were amazing. CDD slayed the Slender Dick. He then slayed Arc. And he and Drake can battle backstage in a false game. It was absolutely amazing. And I, I, I thought CDD was going to go down. But CDD, he fought back. He proved that you don't have to be the biggest guy to defeat the monsters. And he won. Charles Dyer Dillinger retains the DF Championship. Thanks to a Dillinger DDT onto the, onto the office table. It was phenomenal. And then he cuts a sick promo on the end. Let me show. Let me read you the pro. Let me tell you what he said. I have the transcript. I have the transcript of the promo. He says, "July first, two thousand seventeen, the day Charles Dyer Dillinger, the fourteenth, shut Pandora's box and sent three of her monsters back from which they came. Slender Dick, Ark, and Draken all had something in common besides being monsters. They were bigger than me. But I proved that you don't have to be the biggest guy to overcome the obstacles. You got to have heart and a clear goal." And mine is to take over, take out every monster in VGW. Forever, not likely. They'll likely be back. But I'm, but I'm doing it to prove that I am deserving of one thing: the YouTube title. And once I have defeated every monster in my path, I will have proved myself worthy to become champion. And whoever that champion may be, best beware. As I intend to become the first community creation star to hold that coveted belt around my shoulder with pride and dignity. I send further warning to the remaining monsters on my list. The clock is ticking, and I intend to get the rest of you so I can finally prove that why I am the Vancouver Monster Hunter, the greatest Charles Edward Dillinger to ever hunt monsters of all time. And I intend to prove that to everyone in due time. It's my time now. My time to face all the monsters of GTS and show why I am the very best Charles Edward Dillinger in the long line of them. Tough words from Dillinger right there. And next, we had an amazing GTS Intercontinental Championship match. It was Jimmy Controversy defending the title against Vlad, um, Matthias Glass, and Kid Christian. And dude, Jimmy is on a complete and utter roll. He is unstoppable at this point. He's just amazing. He defeated all the... He, He's, he's basically in control of it. He's, he's being booked how he should be booked in GTS, basically. He's being on a, he's on a roll. Next is the three stages of hell with quotations on it. Mass between Steven and Sprinkles the Clown. Now, um, the matchup itself was actually brutal. Both men bled, and they beat the shit out of each other. But there was no three stages of hell. Because Steven got the first fall and the falls can't end in one match. And Sprinkles couldn't continue. So Vendetta and Slender Dick, I, I think it was Slender Dick, came out and carried Sprinkles out. And Steven was crowned the winner, and I think that we got robbed of a match. So yeah, um, Steven basically fought Sprinkles. Yep, it was Slender Dick. So he was unable to continue. And next, easily, easily, the match of the night. Because something big happened here. You want to know what that was? It was going to be Cake and Rook invoking their rematch clause on the Clowns for the GTS Tag Team Championship. Now, you'll know that they got robbed of their GTS Championship by a couple of pumpkins who didn't deserve it. Sorry. Sorry. The McCabe's didn't deserve a shot at all. 
and take a rip got raw, but they had the rematch clause. Thank goodness for that. Oh look, repeating clips. But they got they had the rematch clause. And tonight they cash it in. It looks like they're coming out all happy and jolly, but then an image flashed on the screen. It's like a tour of the graveyard and these keeps flashing back and forth until until it happens. Cake and Rook have unleashed their inner demons. Mr. Bishop and Cake Align have come to VGW. And, the cl and this match was absolutely hell lit. It was easily the match of the night. These two, these four, Cake Align and Rook, Cake Align and Mr. Bishop are the dark side of Rook and Cake. And they have finally come. They've arrived on the scene. They've tapped into a new fa Everything that Kick and Rook have been through in VGW has made them angry. And this is the icing on the cake. And I guarantee, I can assure you of one thing. It's not just going to be those two. Because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a few more joining very, very soon. And they also they also cut a promo. <clears throat> I'm gonna do an impression of them. VGW. G Bishop says VGW. GTS. A new breed of evil has risen from the ashes. From this day forward, the ones known as Cake and Rook are dead. And from their ashes rose the anger their souls left behind. Take a line says. They say, when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes a horrible sadness is carried with that soul, and the soul cannot rest. Our souls have returned. The dark past of the unhappy fool, of the happy fools you came to know and love, has come back and come back to take what they lost. I am Mr. Bishop. I am Cakeline. We are the monsters under your bed. He urges you to attempt to hold back the fear in your your poor little hearts. The first ever two-time community creation tag team champions. We are the Unholy Alliance. And we are your GTS tag team champions. Take a rope with fools for allowing those pumpkin, uh, pumpkins in the McCabe's to steal their titles. And even bigger fools for sending Boom and Seamus to get the titles back. The clowns are no longer scared, so scary when compared to us. Cake and Rook's reign had barely begun before they lost the titles, but this, this is the new beginning. Let the nightmare begin. And then some spooky images flash on the screen. And then a couple of fruit cakes named Stevie O'Tor and Seth O'Riser show up and try to be scary, but they're not. Lol. So yeah, Cake Line and the Bishop have arrived on the scene. The Unholy Alliance has arrived. Cake and Rook are no more. It's now the Unholy... Not for CWA, but for VGW. The Unholy Alliance have arrived. Up next, after that, was the GTS United States Championship on the, on the line. It was Pimp Kara in a nice golden suit, by the way. Versus Kamikaze versus Duhop. And this matchup was crazy. It was absolutely... <laughs> I was kind of rooting for Kamikaze here. However, Duhop retains the U.S. title. He and Jimmy are both unstoppable forces. It's completely, it's completely unstoppable. Like, nobody can stop them. And then we move on to the finals of the tag... Number one contendership to the tag team tournament. Number one contendership to the tag titles. It's Mystic Grass and Brendan Blaze... Versus SWAT City. In the finals of the tag team tournament that has been dragging on. These two teams have been dominant in their run. And the winners of this match will be will will face the winners of this match face the Unholy Alliance at the next um V pay-per-view for GTS 
they will become the number one contenders to those titles. The Jack titles and face the Unholy Alliance. It's Mystic Grass and Brennan Blaze, Team Blaze Grass versus Soda Pop Smith and Ace Marksman of SWAT City. And this matchup was off the chain. My goodness. And guys, this matchup was amazing. And let me tell you how it ended. Brennan Blaze and Mystic Grass unleashed the Unicorn Stampede on the spot on the Soda Pop Smith. Mystic Grass throws Brennan Blaze directly in the Soda Pop Smith with a drop kick. And Team Blaze Grass are the number one contenders to the tag team titles. And let me point something out to you. Team Blaze Grass are undefeated, by the way. Do you want to know something? I did not expect them to even win the tournament. These guys proved to be the huge underdogs of the tournament. These guys got by by pure luck. Now, breaking kayfabe, Status didn't even play as these guys for the entire tournament. Like, I think he only played as them once? And each time he faced, they faced off. Each time they faced, he faced against them. Status's control lost to Blaze Grass. He was Skull, Skull Crusher and Matthew in one match. Mr. Grass plants Skull Crusher with a power bomb into the Boston Crab, and Skull Crusher's tapped like a kite. And this right here proves that Blaze Grass are worthy to be in DGW. This proves that Blaze Grass deserve to be in the company. And honestly, if anyone is going to beat the characters that I made, the Unholy Alliance, it's gonna be Blaze, it should be Blaze Grass. Because honestly, they have earned, they have worked so hard to get where they are right now. They have worked absolutely so hard. And I guarantee that the next CPV for GTS, the Unholy Alliance and Blaze Grass are gonna put on one hell of a show. I mean, have you seen Mr. Grass? Do you see the way that boy flies? That boy is like a 400-pound um, Jamaican man, and he's flying all over the place. Oh, and also, expect to see Mr. Grass and Brennan Blaze in CWA. Because they're just that awesome. Hashtag, have you got my money? And honestly, a lot of the people in the comments actually seem to be really liking Blaze Grass. They seem, these two seem to be, like, they're just, Mr. Grass is like a silly character, just a goofy little character that we, that was made, apparently. I would know because actually I had a hand in making Mr. Grass, because that's my brother who made Mr. Grass. Well, I made Mr. Grass for the most part. My brother made Brandon Blaze. Mr. Grass was never supposed to be something we took seriously, but, when we partnered, partnered him up with Brennan Blaze and back in 2K16, dude, let me tell you, we never forgot. We, we don't. I don't think we'll ever forget Mr. Grass. Mr. Grass. Mr. Grass is just awesome, dude. Like, he looks funny, but if you freak with, if you fuck with Mr. Grass, you're gonna get got. About to get got. I firmly believe that Mr. Grass and Brandon Blaze are future tag team champions. Maybe they won't beat the Unholy Alliance. Maybe they will. But they're definitely, you definitely can't go by and not make these guys tag team champions. One day, even, eventually. They need to be tag team champions eventually. Oh, excuse me. Now, moving on from um, my praising of Mr. Grass and Brandon Blaze. And a blaze. We move on to Galindo versus Pete Corvus. And this match, honestly, to be honest, it, it was a lame. Because Pete Corvus was cashing in his food in the fridge. And, um, and Galindo. Well, let's be honest here. It was bull. Honestly, it was, it was really bull. Because Galindo beat Pete Corvus when Pete Corvus should have won. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't. I when, the moment I saw that 
Galindo was going, they're going to face off in an official match when Corvus is cashing in. I was kind of iffy about that because the point of food in the fridge is to cash in whenever you need to, whenever you feel the need to. Like when it's like it's whenever you whenever you see the opportunity, you take it. You don't just oh, um, I'm going to ask for an official match. I honestly feel like Pete Corvus got wrong. I mean, he honestly. Honestly, Galindo should have faced somebody else, and then Pete Corbett should have cashed in on a weak Galindo. That's just my opinion. And ladies and gentlemen, we are getting to the finals here. Final three on um, the main events. First, we have the GTS Women's Championship on the line. The first champion will be crowned. It's going to be Ashley and Mary. Who saw this coming? I told you. I knew, I knew from the moment Lodestar was eliminated that this was going to happen. And this matchup was really great. I loved it. It was a great match. In the end, Mary became the inaugural women's champion. Congratulations to Mary on becoming the inaugural champion. But a little message is that I don't is that um remember a certain um loads a certain girl named Metro the name of Star who was willing to earn her way to the top. So, congratulations to Mary. And congratulations to everyone. And congratulations to Ashley for making it to the finals. Somebody's coming. Earn her place for that title. Eventually. Just saying. But anyway, congratulations to Mary. She worked her ass off for this. And honestly, she's been treated a lot better than my character. But never mind. Um, next up was the GTS YouTube Wrestling Figures Heavyweight Championship. And ladies and gentlemen, Giant Leather versus Matt Brian Myers is four minutes long. Giant Leather becomes the very first. No, 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 the very first. He becomes a two time YouTube Wrestling Figures Heavyweight Champion. Four minutes. He defeats Brian Myers. And in the remaining, what, like, 12 minutes of the video, he and Mason Voorhees have a brawl. He and Ma Leather and Mason Voorhees brawl it out. In an epic brawl. And they fight, and they fight, and then... It just ends. Mason Voorhees wants a shot at the YouTube title. So I think, honestly, after that performance, Brian Myers, it's been rumored that Kurt Hawkins is leaving BGW. Honestly, I, I think he should just leave now with his tail between his legs. Got lucky at GTS Japan because of Mason Voorhees, but since the stipulation was if anyone interferes on behalf of Myers, then he would lose the title, and he lost. So I guess not a Hey, goodbye. And we get on to the main event of the evening. Pandora's Box. Now, those of you who are not familiar with Pandora's Box, I'm not familiar with it myself. I think it's like a um, forever a movement thing. I don't think Matthew knew that. I'm a little confused. I think it's just a forever a movement thing. Now, the, the Pandora's Box is kind of like money in the bank. However, you can cash in on any title, any match that you want, I think. And obviously, if you're sane, you're gonna put it, you're gonna do it for a title. Obviously. Um. So we had status quo. Yes. Um. We had Max Frost. I think that's Max Frost. Let's check again. I. I'm certain it's Max Frost. Yes, it is. Yes, it's Max Frost. Okay, yes, way Jose, Max Frost, Matt Castle, Matthew, Adam Watkins, and Status Quo. In this match, ooh, mama mia, it was big. It was a big matchup. Status Quo, I thought he was going to get it, man. I thought he was going to become a you know, Pandora's box holder. Honestly, I, I would have liked to see Status Quo, because perhaps we could have seen Status Quo as YouTube Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. 
I honestly would not have liked, I honestly, I would not have liked, I would have honestly not minded that because status quo is freaking awesome. The guy, why do you think I made him the general, we made him the general manager of CWA? He's awesome. He's fantastic. We love him. Trixie loves status quo confirmed. Hashtag that. Uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, um. Um, Rick CX status quo. It's official, folks. And I had to add more um, footage on because I don't know. Anyway, the match was hellacious. These four gave it their all. I mean, no, these six. But in the end, how fitting the guy who made the pay per view, Matthew, brings Pandora's box. And at first. Fine with this. So he sent me a message about what he's going to do. He wants to do with that box. So. Honest to, I'm not gonna say it because it, it's a secret. But he said there was another option, and Matthew listened very closely to me. So Buck said, "Please go with the other option." If you, what you said you were gonna do. Please don't do it. Because you know exactly what I'm talking about. I will give you a thousand reasons why not to do it. I'm not going to be any specific. I'm not going to be specific. I'm not going to tell anyone what. He, but if you go through with it, you can expect me not to be a very happy camper. I can. I understand. Yes, you have Pandora's box. You can do whatever the fuck you want. But for fuck's sake, dude. Come on, please, for me, pick something else, for me, let, I'm trying to do something here, and if you do what you're going to do, what I think you're going to do, it's going to fuck everything up that I'm trying to do. If you want to cash in Pandora's box, do it for something, but I, honestly, just keep throwing Galindo at something, dude. Just, just get rid of Galindo. Get Galindo out of the world title because he's not he's not world title worthy in my opinion. Just just do that. For, for fuck's sake, Matthew. Please. Please, you're an awesome guy and don't I don't I can't this. Do it, you're gonna hit me pissed off at you. I'm gonna be fucking enraged. I'm gonna be I'll be, I think I'll basically be done. I'll be done. I'll be, I'll, I'll be fumed. I'll be fucking triggered. Everything. And I don't want to be. I don't want the anxiety of having to wait and see if you're going to do it. And then the fear of you know my plans being fucked up and ruined. I don't want that. I want my. I want to do my plans. I have plans, dude. And if you do what you're gonna do, that's gonna ruin all my plans. All the plans I want to, achieve, I want to do. I can, if if you message me on Xbox Live, I'll give you a more specific reason. I can't be specific right now because of YouTube. You want? I'm. I have some decency. I'm not going to reveal what you said your plans were, but dude, please go with the second option. Don't do what you said that you. Thought you were gonna do. I told you. I told you on Xbox Live to, that I. I told you the reasons why I didn't want you to do it. Just go with the second option, dude. Please. I don't care what the second option is. It could be for Giant Leather. It could be against Galindo. Do hop. You said it was gonna be unexpected. And don't be let it be the thing I'm expecting from you. Okay? You're an awesome dude. I like talking to you. You are one, you're one of the 100. You're the, you're one of the 100 that I, of subscribers that I have. And I don't, I don't want to be pissed off at, over something stupid. It could be avoided. Like, I'm not going to force you into anything, but I'm, I'm just asking, please. Like, just let my plans play out like I want to. Please do. Let me do my plans. Because if you do that, I will be in ever in your debt. Okay? 
Thanks. If you do that, I, I will appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. This is Rixie signing off. Hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.